So that we started? Yeah. Hey, Ed. Hey, Mark. How's it going? It's going well. I, uh, been here since uh, about five o'clock, and I've been, uh, Five o'clock? I've been here since five o'clock, oh and I've gosh. been uh, preparing my thoughts and ideas. That's amazing. Well, I'm glad we get to share um, them with the with Exactly. The group. Exactly. So, um, I don't know if you know this, Ed, but I have uh, struggled my whole life with being overweight. Um, it's, uh, you remember me in high school, and that was, uh, that was quite uh, a it wasn't big, but I wasn't small, mm -hmm. and so it plagued me emotionally. Sure. So, and and in my um, in my younger years, you know, I listened to the the rhetoric that was at the time that some things were good and some things were bad. There's the health message that we have with Ellen White um, that talks about good foods and bad foods. You know, shit meat, red meat, and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like gung ho on the health message or anything, mm -hmm. but mainly I wasn't worried about food. I was worried cause I live in a country where we have plenty of food. We do. We can go to the grocery store and unless there's a hurricane apparently around the corner, yes. the, 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 uh, the, the, the shelves are full of food. We do not live in a food desert. As food desert. Yeah, yeah, we are not. We are not lacking in nutrients. Sure. Um, so I've never had food insecurities, mm -hmm. um, which is that. But I have had weight insecurities, and my attempt to remedy this has gone through a bunch of cycles. Mm -hmm. um, my weight maybe at one point has been down. At my adult weight, probably been down to about 174 pounds, and as most as, as much as 260. Oh wow! So I have had a large swing. That's not yeah. one week. You know, I'm one weight. I would not imagine that yeah, you can and, manage that. And over weight. from age 25 to probably age 40, I've had the okay. large swings in my weight. I try to keep consistent. I think ultimately. Keeping consistent weight, even if I'm overweight, was the healthiest. But at some point, I said even carrying some weight has caused me to take blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it had anything to do with my rheumatology disease, being lupus or anything like that. But I feel like my greatest failure in my life, the thing that weighs on me the most, is my weight. Um, be as it may, we don't know if that's really true, but hey, might as well try it, you know, might as well get rid of these, these weight issues mm -hmm. once and for all. So I've been searching high and low, uh, YouTube videos. Maybe that's not the best source, but I led upon, uh, some ideas. What causes me to gain weight? Why am I consistently at 220 pounds today? Mm -hmm. Not today, but in today's timeline, why is 220 always the weight I'm usually coming back to? And I found some answers. Um, one is I have a programmed position in my brain the part that I have no control over, because there's a bunch of that part, that says that this weight is the weight I should be no matter what I do. Um, and I was like, well, okay, if that, where did that weight come from? Why can't I change it? Because I tell you what, there are diets that have worked, but they're also the same diets that failed. So all diets work. Let me let me be let me be very clear. All diets work, all diets fail. Exactly. All diets work, all diets fail. Now our friends on the internet may may be like, yeah, I know. I was like, but you know, if you change your lifestyle, okay, we're not talking about lifestyle. We're talking about diets, mm -hmm. specifically diets. This is this is what we're talking about. 
So if I go to Weight Watchers and they're like, okay, these are the foods you should eat. We have some foods for you. In six months, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. Absolutely. 40 pounds. Six months later, I bet you I put that 40 pounds on. Consistently, every human in the Western world will consistently put on weight after they've taken it off. And why is that? Because there's something in our brain, part of the brain that does the, uh, we, can, we can talk about the parts, you know, there's like a, yeah. it's the, we, the, the, the monkey brain. Like the or monkey the monkey brain, but yeah, not, right. not the intelligent part, the, right, not, not the, the smart thinking right. part, not the smart, more of the yeah. kind of gut instinct right. kind of autonomous part. What's the one with the A word, starts with an A, but doesn't sound like an A, uh, 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 the, uh, not the medulla, but the, the uh, amygdala? amygdala. But that's about fear and, and anger, though. Okay. Well, then there's there's another part. Yeah. This is a regulatory. So, anyways, uh, limbic system. The limbic system. Ah. Yes. Yeah. The limbic functioning system. Mm -hmm. That is part of it. You know, it's, it's regulatory, and mm -hmm. so it says, "Hey, you know, we we like this way," and it's like, "Yeah, okay." Can I interject a question? Yes, go ahead. So is it the weight or is it the fat muscle ratio that it's trying to hit? Because like, for example, like if, if your weight was 220 and you lost a bunch of fat weight mm -hmm. without gaining muscle, and then you were down at like 210 or something, let's say, or 200, and then yeah. all of a sudden, your body says, wait, I should be 220 again. Could you trick it and get back to 220 by building muscle and then not regain the fat? No. 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 It's about the percentage of the yeah. fat muscle ratio. Yeah. Okay. So as I've done the research, um, I, was, I found this book called The Obesity Code. Uh, it's written by Jason Fung. Uh, he's unlocking the secrets of weight loss. And some of the things he's broken down, he's, uh, he uses human studies to prove these, these facts that he has discovered. Okay. Um, so the story goes, two cows were talking that, you know, two cows were talking about the recent study on lions. And the, they said, one cow said, you know, lion you know, lions should eat meat, so I guess we should eat meat. And and the the cow the cows started eating meat and they died. Right. So then two lions were talking about the recent study on cows and how they eat grass. And so, you know, the two lions started eating grass and the lions died. So the moral of the story is we're not lions, we're not cows, we're not sheep, we're not mice. So why would we take studies that are done on mice when we should do, we should take studies on humans? We're humans. Now there are similarities, I grant, grant you there are similarities between mice and humans and stuff like that, but human studies are more accurate than interrelated you know, studies. That okay. that's the moral of that. So what's the here. what's a counter example? Like what what kind of a study was would have been done on mice that would be applicable to my diet? Um just for everyone else who has no idea. I mean I oh, okay. I know I, I know perfectly well what you're talking about. I just was hoping you might explain for everyone else. Well I I mean there are studies that are done on mice, but I'm not that what we're talking about is the book only oh, okay. uses human studies okay it only so it can't we could reference later on other study like a study that was done recently or in the last 20 years on a you know um on the the, the sweetener the, the the artificial sweetener oh um, that kind of stuff saccharin so like uh, like target like but, specifically but, targeted foods right stuff. particularly target like that particular study study i believe everyone quotes and saying well of course, I won't drink Diet Coke because it causes cancer, right? Well, there's other reasons why you probably shouldn't drink Diet Coke, but cancer is probably your least of your worries since no one has been, it's uh -huh. not been 
directly connected by a study it, it caused cancer in, in rats, rats but not in humans right the sweetener that's yeah, what right, is it it's it's, uh, sacral, saccharin or yeah, yeah whatever, it whatever it is so that that that's an example of okay. you know we could say it might but we can pretty much say it does when we use humans as our as our quote unquote guinea pigs sure okay yeah i already knew that Okay, I'm just, we're just, yeah, yeah. Informed. We're, we're, so informed. we're informed, we're informed. Um, so, let's see. So I wanted to go over the fact that we have some bad news. Bad news? We have some bad news. Is that the part of our brains that makes us want to- No, no, that's, that's, that's okay. good news because it, indirectly we have control over that. I'll later on, we'll go over that. So some bad news is, is that, um, on a scale of, you know, on the, these percent, we will throw out percentages. Um, so scientists did studies in Denmark with families that had adopted kids mm -hmm. and they also, and Denmark, the reason they use Denmark is because Denmark's really good at tracking adoption and families that, you know, children that were separated from their their parents for adoptive oh, okay. reasons. So they, they have a really good basis for information in Denmark to say, okay, here's, here's a child and here's, a, here, here's his parents, but they aren't, but this child lives in these parents' house and this, these parents are here. So they're trying to correlate genetics. Okay. And they found that if this child was with um, genetically disposition skinny parents mm -hmm. the child's weight uh, whatever the weight of the adopted parents did not in any way help or hinder any any effects so the the theory of uh, nature versus nurture okay so it's saying it was all nature it's all nature okay it's all nature fat Got it. over overweight children uh, okay. come from overweight parents so your weight weight propensity right 100 percent nature actually it's seven percent so you have so they found that 70 percent of the time most of the so most 70 mm percent -hmm. is most um so i was going to use the example i said ed okay everybody if everybody was here i said ed um i need you to get 100 percent of this quiz well but you already answered over half the questions. Right. So it's really yeah, kind of a lot of those are wrong. Right. There's one of them that's right. Exactly. A few of them is right. Few of them are right. But you have you can't answer. You can you need to get a you need to get a grade on that. That's passing. But you can't because seventy percent of the questions are already been answered. Let's see. So so you're saying that the odds are stacked against us. The odds are stacked against us. Ah. Okay. So first off, we have to accept that weight loss, weight gain, and this is what I've come to, is not my fault. Oh, I have good. I have no control over it. And I think a lot of people come to that conclusion, or they go throughout their day and they're like, man, I'm just going to exercise, and that's really going to solve it. What I do, you know what I'm saying, because I don't think you can pass that test. Unless I can change the answers. Unless no, you can. can change the answers, you can't pass that test. Right. right. So the biggest issue is we have 30% control over this issue, which means that oh. at the end of the day, we really don't have control over the issue. Right, right. But what is it that we do have control over? All right. So the. So that's a really good example. I feel like that's a really good. I, I didn't this find this in the book. This is an outstanding example. I didn't, I didn't you find it in the book. All by I'm on myself. This is an amazing example. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, Mark went and filled in almost all of these answers wrong. Okay. So I only have the opportunity to get like six of them right. And other, other than that, I have no say in what grade I get on this, on this yeah. quiz. I, I, and that, it's pretty much, so when we consider... So the epiphany is when we consider our ability to control what we're doing, a lot of it's out of our hands already. So that lowers the bar literally. When somebody walks in and says, 
I'm obese and it's all my fault. I'm like, no, no, it's not. It's not your fault. You know, it's like, just say it. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not, you know, anyway. So we see positive that. affirmation. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so that's the good. So the 30%, what can we do? What is the overall um, solution here? So maybe ask ourselves, besides genetics, which is 70% of the problem or 70% of the solution, because I have some quizzes in here you probably pass, even though, because most of them, the answers are correct. Oh, Some I just got a bad one? You just got a bad one. Oh, even better example. Even better example. Oh, so like the genes, it's like some yeah. people's predisposition might be better than right. mine. Exactly. I got screwed because of all the wrong answers. On right, it. so what okay. we do have control over, what we have control over is what we put in our bodies. Okay. What we do with this 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 food. So if we had to add a scale here, um, and we had three, three. The overall, if I had, if I had a bar graph, and we said the overall. Um, You've been here since five. Why didn't you draw? Oh, I'll graph? draw. I'll draw it. I'll draw it. <laughs> no, okay. don't. Don't waste time now. Okay. So, so there's three things that the body does. It it, it regulates. It has a it has a basal metabolic rate. Okay. All right. It has it has food that we put in, mm -hmm. and we have this little thing up here that's exercise, like that little. The little section is what we can actually extra do. And let's be clear, exercise is when we get our heart rate up past a certain point or, or, and maintain it or, or fluctuate it. Okay. Um, you know, we, we fluctuate the heart, you know, because people do exercise and get it higher or lower. Oh. Okay. Um, but you're, during a sustained yeah. level of, of exercise, yeah. We do cause um, our caloric and caloric um, higher burning in that moment. Sure. Um, but there's the, the herein lies the problem. If we exercise, we get hungrier. That's so our true. basal rate. Let's say our let's say we're trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So our basal rate stays the same. Or we, we assume that it stays the same, mm -hmm. all right? Our caloric intake now needs to go higher. It's true. Because we're hungrier. Mm -hmm. And that means that we gotta exercise more. But we only have a little bit that we can actually influence with the uh, with the exercise. Because I can't I if, if and, and I'm not saying people eat um, food and then they figure out how many calories they're supposed to burn. Um, you can, you could probably figure that out. But I'd like to, what I'd like to mention here is calories in, calories out are independent of each other. That is an assumption. That is a particular assumption. Calories in, Calories out are independent of each other. Okay. And they aren't actually. Oh, I know. you're saying that people make that assumption, but that's incorrect. Correct. Interesting. So let me clarify with that. Okay, so calories in, calories out, calories in, calories, in, calories in. If I eat 5,000 calories today, calories out still stays the same. Right. Studies have shown that when you eat more calories, your body has a tendency to burn more calories. You will, the, the, the gentlemen, a gentleman, all right, this is, this is so cool. Um, yeah, because when I eat a lot, I tend to just sit down and right. not burn more. So this workout guy, he decided that he would debunk the if I if I if I he he works out he and he he said okay I'm gonna eat a five thousand calorie diet I'm gonna prove that I'm gonna literally prove that I'm gonna gain weight um, because I'm gonna eat more than my metabolic rate requires um, and 
the weight gain that he experienced was momentary. So in, in about two, three weeks, it, it leveled off and he was, you know, he was able to burn that 5,000 calories. Um, what we're finding, what, what the studies find is that metabolism depends on, is a multifaceted issue. It has, metabolism is a great word to describe 20, 30 processes in the body. Heat production, I got, I got this, this is, this is amazing. Um, here we go. So what determines energy output of the system? Suppose we consume 2000 calories of chemis, chemical energy food, calories, chemical energy food in one day. What is the metabolic fate of those 2000 calories? Possibilities for those uses include heat production, new protein production, new bone production, new muscle production, cognition, increased heart rate, increased stroke volume in the heart, exercise, physical exertion, detoxification in the liver, detoxification in the kidney, digestion, pancreas and bowels, breathing, exertion, intestines and colon, and fat production. So you're saying it's important that we eat food? No. Oh. Yes. It does all those things. Right. The food, we the, the food, the food that we eat, no matter what it is, uh, no matter what it is, is used by the body in a in a very systematic way. Sure. And anything extra, it says, hey, let's save it for later, mm -hmm. or it, you know, it exits the body. Okay. So, but most of it's used or saved. Okay. If for all of these functions, and all these functions. Are, can be reduced or increased based on the amount that it gets. In the but let me put it this way. It's going to do these whether you put food in your body or not. Right. And the types of food that you eat can make certain, certain of those processes easier or more difficult, right? Right. Yeah. So like certain food, it's really easy for the, the body to use that to do right. X, but so, other types it might be harder for it to use it for that. Right. So let's talk about let's talk about that. Okay. There are three types of nutrients. Okay. Macronutrients. Yeah. Macronutrients is fats, mm -hmm. proteins, yeah. and carbohydrates. Right. Um in, in the in the world that we live in, uh, if you walk into a grocery store, 90% of it is the middle of the store, like all that process. Well, besides all this stuff, if it's food, it's probably in the middle of the store. That's that you're, you're not the outskirts, you know, the, the, the vegetables, oh, the fish, the meat, the milk, they the keep eggs. all of the processed foods in the middle. At least I know that Publix does that. I don't, well, back in the day, by what we used to not yeah, do no, that. I think but, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like Trader Joe's Whole Foods, they all do that. So the so I'm not proposing that there's a theory that you should only eat the foods on the outside, like the outs. It's a great idea, but there's there's some errors. There's some errors in that assumption. Um, first off, sometimes that outer aisle has has fruit juices on it, um, so which can be you know it could be high in sugar, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but those three macronutrients are required for, you know, and they, they do different things. Like, so let's say, um, you know, fat uh, is good. You know, fat, fats are good because there's high, you know, it's a high caloric, high caloric amount of, of food. But let me just say this, calories, this is the thing that we need to debunk. Calories in, calories out, they are one they're not they're in they are not independent of each other right. and secondly you can't use that as a, as a if you eat all carbohydrates mm -hmm. that's right for instance if you eat all carbohydrates no fats no 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 proteins you will and you keep that calorie 
at a certain level, 1200 calories, your body, you can still gain weight. You can still, because it's not about calories in, calories out. So, so earlier when you were talking about how your body will burn more calories if you eat more calories, right. were you referring more not to human intervention, but more about like the internal metabolic functions in the body somehow accelerate and adapt to burn more of what you've taken in because yes. you've taken an extra. Correct. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I think I misunderstood initially, but now. Okay, good. I'm, I get I'm, it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because it can be confused. That, that can, yeah, that can right. be, well, I, well okay. Because, so well, it's because of the way you were saying it in relation to like a study or something. You're saying uh, the study has shown that people burn more calories or something like that. And so I was thinking like, I ate a lot, but so to now increase, I'm going to exercise. To increase, you can increase caloric burning, basal metabolic rate, by, by with because basal is based on these functions, all okay. those functions that I talked about. Uh -huh. You can increase caloric burning by increasing your food intake. That doesn't necessarily oh. mean you're going to gain weight. It just means that you literally are going to burn more, burn more calories on a regular basis. Um, but that, that basal metabolic rate can actually but increase. Your net, net change is really zero. Yeah, your net change, your weight net change could be zero. Okay. So, um, but that's really, it, it really has to do with what, what, what we're getting to is that, that weight gain has to do with a hormone response. So, uh, horm and there are tons of hormone. Hormones are the things that your body um, uses to regulate. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, hormone gets sent out, something, something in the body does something. Um, so, there's a couple things I can make, you know, you can, we can make people gain weight very easily. And just, you know, the, med the medical field knows exactly how to make people gain weight. One, and there's two drugs. There's insulin and there's prednisone. Okay. So I used to take prednisone. Mm -hmm. um, one time I was in the hospital, they had me on a really high dose of prednisone. And I gained a lot of weight and my face was round. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, we know. We know that it's going to do it, you know, but you're going to, once you come off of it, it's going to come down. You know what they always say? Like that they put all these extra hormones into like meats yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. to fatten them up and make them gain weight. Yeah. 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 So maybe tricky, that is, tricky. there might be a reason not to eat, not to eat meat. If those are, if their hormones, if there's, if those hormones are still present in the food that you're exactly. eating. Exactly. Right. That's what right. I was thinking. So you have to, you know, you have, you can either assume that all meat has hormones in it. Or you can or do assume, your homework. Or do your homework. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's very. I didn't mean to sidetrack. No, I was no, just no, putting I'm, the yeah, yeah, pieces exactly. together. So then insulin, uh, type type one and type two diabetics. Mm -hmm. um, so before insulin was invented, uh, m m m well before we we discovered. Okay, before uh, before the modern era when insulin. Before we could make fake insulin. Oh, okay. And inject it into people that right. have type one diabetes. Okay. Type one is, is in, you know, the one where the pancreas doesn't work, or the, the what's the word? In? Pancreas. Liver. No, the liver, pancreas. Yeah, both. Um, whichever, Kidneys. whatever, whatever okay. organ doesn't it produces the insulin naturally in the body. Oh, okay. Um, when that function shuts down, mm -hmm. no matter how much a type one diabetic eats they will not gain weight. So they will shiver, shiver when they get, when they onset of type one diabetes, like they, they, it occurs in their body and they're unable to, to, no matter how much they eat, they can eat five, 10, 20, they cannot gain weight. It's impossible for a type one diabetic. Because the hormones are pretty good. Okay, sure. Right, correct. Oh, interesting. So when, but when we give type one and type two diabetics insulin, okay. Mostly in type type two diabetics because their their pancreas is shut down. I believe it is the pancreas. When their pancreas has okay. shut down, 
because of some, whatever reason, and type two, they also gain weight. So we can make people gain weight. We just give them insulin. Sure. Um, we can make people gain weight in other ways. So that so hormone, the hormone insulin, is one of the major um, hormones in our body that causes weight gain. Okay. Um, and of course, we go back to genetics. Hey, maybe some people produce more insulin than others. But so really, it's not really well, naturally. That, I mean, that would be the right. cause for like uh, genetically, I guess, genetic diabetes, right? Because like right. type one is genetic. Genetic, right? yeah, yeah. And then type two is is is. Um, How do you get it? Well, you get it from usually being stressed, oh. having a stressed out pancreas. Oh, and okay. so then that pancreas shuts down. Ice. And now, yeah. So something that Boke talks about is called insulin resistance. Okay. So over time, uh, we get, humans' bodies get resistant to hormones. Mm -hmm. You have so many, so many of those hormones in your body running around so much that the body's just like, well, we're getting pain so much, we're going to start ignoring this. And so as time goes on, the hormones start shutting down. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the hormone receptors stop, stop accepting new signals. They, you know, someone has pressed the button. Mm -hmm. And after 20 times, someone's going to start ignoring that. That's right, the right. Same, same scenario with the, so the hor many hormone responses. So when, when we get overflooded with insulin, something has to not accept those signals from then on. Okay. And uh, the good thing is, is that insulin is not a long lasting hormone in the body. Like it, it goes oh. away pretty quickly. Okay. But if it's constantly dinging, like if you're, you're eating foods that are, you know, high in, the, in, in high in insulin production, then of course, even with that reduction or yeah, even with that reduction, it, it, it's gonna, your body's going to start resisting that response. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we see, what they see is with insulin resistance comes, you know, over, overweightness. But if you're resistant to, right, I, oh, you're, are you resistant to processing the insulin? Right. Are you resistant to having the insulin? You're resistant to process, in, resistant okay. processing. So, so that means there's excess insulin which means you gain weight. Right, okay. exactly. So um, we got over those things. Okay, so basal metabolic, so remember, number two, the second assumption is basal metabolic rate is stable. We know that, we know it fluctuates. Okay. We know it fluctuates. Like you, you can, and, and this, is, this is in the studies where it's like you can go on a website and be like, well, what's your basal metabolic rate? Okay, well, person that's overactive, Super active and um, you know sedentary. Um, well, well, we'll we'll make assumptions and we'll we'll assume that your basal metabolic rate. But they don't. That it makes a lot of assumptions. Okay. And so when you make some assumptions about things, usually you're wrong. And so you started off with the wrong theory in the beginning. Right. So how are you gonna? You're not gonna do well in the end. The answer is, if the first answer is wrong then the last answer is probably going to be wrong as well. All right. Assumption three, we, we exert conscious control over calories in. Okay. So we assume that when we're home, when we, we're going to eat only three times a day. We're going to eat what we choose. We're going to eat what we choose. And that's our assumption. That's our assumption. Which, following the pattern, is wrong. Well, I think you're the only one here I can use, uh, can ask. Okay. When, have you eaten when you were bored? Um, probably, but uh, I think uh, that's do, not something Do you I run a kitchen food. closed house? Closed. You run a kitchen open kitchen closed philosophy in your house. I'm not sure what that means. It means that breakfast is at 
eight um, to eight thirty. No. No one eats before eight, and no one eats after eight. No better not that. Okay. Do you eat? So you don't have that. No. So you know the lunch and dinner. Yeah, I don't have snacks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be, but it's usually because so, well, at least the, what I attributed to is not doing the regimented meals, right? So it's like I don't really eat breakfast at a certain time and a certain amount. So I might grab something, but then I'm still hungry at ten. So right. So I what I'm saying meals. is, yeah. is that in that assumption three, you have control of when you you grab even a snack, which is not necessarily true. Right. So you're right. answering. Boredom, and I'm just using you. I'm not attacking right, 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 you. I'm just saying. So you're choosing to eat when you're hungry, or for other faceted reasons. But unconsciously. Unconsciously, because what's happening is we, our brains, your lizard brain, our lizard brains, says whatever eat. says, hey, you know what? Here's, you know, I smell, I smell something. <laughs> I see food so i should eat it uh -huh. like there's donuts at work so i might as well have one yeah yeah so consciously you think you have control of it but actually subconsciously you are not in really control of the situation so that's a, that's interesting because like just to relate a quick story or not story but whatever uh is that one thing that i've been trying based on some recommendations that i read um was don't eat carbs in the morning. Wait, <laughs> you know, and, and don't eat carbs until noon or okay. after. Okay, all right? right. So you only just eat like fruit and stuff in the morning, right. like raw vegetables, okay. and stuff like that. All right. And so I did really good on that for a few months, um, but but I do feel like sometimes it's like. I have the idea in my head that I really should only eat the fruit. Right. But for some reason, it's like I can't resist cereal or bread or some right. sort of carb. I right. have to have it, you know? Right. I don't know. It's, is that kind of like what you're talking about? I like think how so. Sort of unconscious, yeah. you have this need for. I think it grabs the, the concept energy. while there's some, you know, some good things and bad. Obviously, we're, we're, remember, the assumption is we have control. Right. And sometimes we don't. So most likely we don't. Right, like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Um, fat stores. Okay. Fat stores. Number four. We already talked about insulin. So fat stores assumption. Fat stores are essentially unregulated, which by definition, why would there be only one thing in our body unregulated while everything else is? Heat is regulated. Mm -hmm. Brain function is regulated. Everything is regulated. If it wasn't regulated, we'd probably fall apart. You know, yeah. we probably would have a terrible time in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, so that is a horrible assumption. Okay. That fat storage is essential. It's unregulated, and we know based on the fact that we can regulate your fat storage just by just giving you a hormone mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know insulin oh so we're saying so so we're basically saying that we think that fat storage is somehow only related to what i eat and stuff but there, there's no internal process that's regulating it that that's what we think right and then but really there is something regulating the fat storage oh yeah beyond what we're just been absolutely doing. okay Got yeah it. Got it. that that is that's that's absolutely true so, and then five, Wait a, a calorie is a calorie. How can that be wrong? Because, a calorie is a remember calorie. macronutrient theory? All of those are calories. True. If a calorie is a calorie, then, then just eating just carbohydrates, you should, you should lose weight. Or just eating protein, you should just lose weight. Or just eating oh. fat. So, macronutrient you would gain weight so the point of this one is is to debunk theories that say only eat you know only eat protein and don't eat right. any carbs right. like zero carbs and stuff like yeah. that yeah a calorie is not a calorie right okay. so carbohydrates you can't just eat a 
um, a low fat diet. Like when you see those, when you see those, uh, those average, you know, for, for the longest time that when the Food and Drug Administration created this concept that in you know, the food pyramid, right. they, they, you know, eat more of this, eat less of that. Right. Um, you know, there was a there was a conspiracy about that, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's for the farmers or the bread industry or right, something. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so we we want to throw out the the concept that a calorie is a calorie. So if it's a calorie isn't a calorie, then if we did calories in, calorie out on a basic day, and tried to lower our caloric intake, we would have a major problem because if we lowered our caloric intake to 500 calories. But it was just Twinkies, we would have, you know, it would all be processed carbohydrates. Okay. Or if we just took in, uh, you know, just eggs or, or just, you know, it, uh, but that's not the point of it. The point is, is that different macronutrients cause different insulin spikes. Oh. oh. So a fat technically doesn't cause the insulin spike that a a uh, piece of fruit does. I see what you're saying. So fats don't cause that insulin spike. What a fruit piece of fruit would. Wait, you're saying fruit would cause an insulin spike, and we know that the insulin spike makes me gain weight. So you're saying the fruit's going to make me right, gain so weight. Right. So here's the here's the great okay and unique truth. The the causal nature of the high fructose corn syrup oh no yeah that's horrible stuff it is it is but i bet you it's in a lot of your foods a lot I'm of sure our foods is. okay so the use of high fructose corn syrup in our diet mm -hmm. directly tracks with obesity rates rising in in um, industrialized nations um I can show you a graph. So here is, I don't know, people can't see it, but here is a wonderful graph. Okay. Here's 1961. Here's the use of high fructose corn syrup. Oh, the total fructose. Okay. Obesity prevalence. Okay. Slowly, gradually going up. Free fructose. High fructose corn syrup. Okay. All right. So what this graph is showing us is that we had we had total fructose. Why the huge spike in the eighties? Notice the correlation. You mean the correlation? Well, yeah, but I'm just saying why the like it went up really sharply in the eighties and then went up slower afterwards. Is that yeah, because people we, got more health conscious? Well we, we we were we were we were producing the stuff right and we were putting in our foods and then we started to wise up. Yeah in the nineties. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean I, I here here's a here's an industry that uh, comes along and says, hey we've got a brand new sugar. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put it in our we're going to put it in our foods, and, and it's highly available. It's really cheap. Hey, do you think in like twenty years xylitol is going to be the new? I don't know. What that? Is going to, oh, that's a sugar, one of these sugar replacements. Okay. The, the nouveau, you know, sugar All right. replacement. All right. Let me let me let me say this. There hasn't been yet, and I don't know about xylitol, but there hasn't been yet a sugar alternative mm. that does not cause insulin spikes. Okay. So you can have a caloric reduction diet, drink oh. diet coke and still gain weight. Interesting. So regardless of, okay, so let's say sugar itself had like 500 calories, but the same amount of like stevia has like 200 calories. Right. So but then you eat the stevia, you have less calories, same insulin spike. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's why people that are still gain still, weight. Still gain weight while okay. drinking the diet, diet sodas. Sure. Um, so wait, does that mean it's not really helping me at all to put stevia or xylitol in my coffee? No. As opposed to just regular sugar? Right. 
why are you wasting your time? Wow. Sugar, sugar is, uh -huh. there's three sugars, right? There's, there's sucrose, glucose, and fructose. Okay. Those are the three naturally occurring sugars. Now fructose sounds the healthiest. Because <laughs> it sounds like I'm about to say fruit, let me, but let then me, I don't. Let me say this. The chapter uh -huh. 14 in this book uh -huh. is literally called The Deadly Effects of Fructose. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why it's high fructose corn syrup. Right? Listen, I, I it's don't, not high sucrose I'm not in any way ever going to say don't eat an apple. But it does have natural sugars. But it has a sugar that occurs naturally in fruit. Mm -hmm. But here's here's the crazy thing. All right. So, oh man, I'm not good at this. All right. So if you can imagine a a, 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 a glucose molecule. Okay. A glucose molecule is is a six sided molecule. Um, okay. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. we, sure. we do a search, you can find the molecule arrangement, and it's, the glucose is a six sided arrangement. You'll find that in all carbs, uh, rice, you know, everything, everything. All, all, and that's that there's just rice is just changed in glucose. Uh, and, and, and fructose is, and, and by the way, glucose can be used in every cell of your body. You take table sucrose and glucose. And you put it, you put it in your coffee, and you can, you can, you know, you could just, your body can use it anywhere, anytime, right out of the, right out of the, food, the intestines and straight into the bloodstream, okay. no problem, no, no issues whatsoever. Glucose. Fructose, unfortunately, is a five-sided molecule. Okay. Uh, the way it's described, okay, so. Fructose, the most dangerous sugar. Where does, okay, so glucose, a sugar with a vapid molecular structure of a six sided ring, can be used by virtually every cell in the body. Glucose is the main sugar found in the blood and circulates throughout the body. In the brain, it is preferred, it's the preferred energy source. There, it's just like, I got glucose, I got power. Okay. You know, you got, you got the lights on in the brain with glucose. Muscle cells would generally import glucose from the blood for quick energy boost. Certain cells, such as red blood cells, can only use glucose for energy. Blood, blood cell, red blood cells can only use glucose for energy. Glucose can be stored in the body in various forms, such as glycogen in the litter, liver. If glucose stores, stores run low, the liver can make new glucose via glu the glucose. Glucinogens pro the, by the process. There's a process to make new glucose in the liver. Fructose, a sugar with the basic molecular structure of a five-sided ring, is found naturally in fruit. It is metabolized only in the liver. It does not circulate in the blood. The brain, muscles, and most other tissues cannot use fructose directly for energy. Eating fructose does not appreciably change blood, sh blood glucose levels, but glucose and fructose are single sugars, or both, I'm sorry, both glucose and fructose are single sugar or monosaccharides. Table sugar is called sucrose and is composed of one molecule of glucose linked to one molecule of fructose. Really? Sucrose is 50% glucose, 50% fructose. High fructose corn syrup is composed of 55% fructose, 45% glucose. Carbohydrates are composed of sugar, composed of sugars. When these carbohydrates contain a single sugar monosaccharides or two sugars disaccharides, they are called simple carbohydrates. When many hundreds or even thousands of sugars are linked into long chains, polysaccharides, they are called complex carbohydrates. We've heard all these words. Yes. We've, we know all them. Complex all right. carbs are better. So where does fructose fit in? Fructose does not raise blood glucose appreciably, yet even more strongly linked to obesity and diabetes than glucose. Remember I said, it says, the book says, Fructose does not raise blood glucose 
appreciably, yet even more strongly linked to obesity and diabetes than glucose. Is the reason that that statement is there to say that in general, glucose, no, sorry, glu blood glucose can be generated or raised by things other than glucose? Right. Okay. So the liver can raise blood glucose levels. Yes, I caught that. Glucose itself, a sugar Wait. found in, you know, rice and other things when they de when the intestines decouple all those sugars, um, rice and other foods can find glucose, but fruit, a predominantly fructose, the, the, the sugar found in fruit, called fructose, is predominantly only processed by the liver, which then can be turned into glucose. Oh, I get it. I All right, so, so yes. this is my favorite part of the book. This okay. is, gets down to the core. Before we get to the final conclusion of how All we solve no fruit. <laughs> All right, no, no, please no. From a nutritional standpoint, neither fructose nor glucose contains a central nutrient. As a sweetener, both are similar, yet fructose seems particularly malevolent malevolent? To, yeah, to human health. Fructose was previously considered a benign sweetener because of its low glycemic index. Yes. Fructose is found naturally in fruit and is then is the sweetest naturally occurring carbohydrate, which what could go wrong with that? The book says, what could go wrong? You eat tons of apples. I mean, the problem, as often is the cause, is a matter of scale. Natural fruit consumption contributed to only a small amount of fruit of fructose in our diets. In the range of 15 to 20 grams per day, yeah. things begin to change the development of, of high with the high the development of high fructose corn syrup fructose consumption steadily rose until the year 2000 when it peaked at nine percent of total calories oh, wow. adolescents in particular were heavy users of fructose at 72.8 grams per day remember we were taking in 15 to 20 uh -huh. and now we were taking in 72.8 wow yeah High fructose corn syrup was developed. Remember, fructo high fructose is 55 yeah. fructose, 45 glucose. Right. High fructose corn syrup was developed in 1960 as a liquid equivalent. This is anyway. Okay. So here's the thing. It takes. I, I loved when my dad and I we would get some oranges and we'd squeeze them. But when you squeeze oranges, how many oranges does it take to fill up a glass of orange, of making a glass of orange juice? If you want a good sized glass, it might take you three or four. Right. Yeah. So try to eat three or four oranges or try to eat one glass of orange juice. Right. It, like it says, it's a matter of scale. Now I'm, I'm probably preaching the choir, like eat fruit, but eat it whole. Get right. that whole aisle of juice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's where that part of the story comes from. It's like, but you can't, but you have to, you know, avoid high fructose corn. But overall, what is still causing, you know, uh, it doesn't cause it doesn't cause. Um, how do I say this? Let me say this. Fructose is a high fructose corn syrup does some amazing things. All right. Amazingly bad things. No, no, it does some amazing things. In the processed food, high fructose corn syrup found a natural partner. As in, and so we're not, I'm not demonizing because, and I'm just saying, you know, food producers should just stop using it. Um, we just should need to be aware of it. In processed foods, high fructose corn syrup found a natural partner. As a liquid, it could easily be incorporated into processed food, but its advantages did not stop there. Just consider that, that it is a sweetener. It's sweeter than glucose, all right? Mm -hmm. 
it prevents freezer burn, it helps, it helps browning, it mixes easily, it extends shelf life, it keeps bread soft, and has a low glycemic index. So, I mean, when you tell a food producer, hey, by the way, um, you probably should stop using high fructose corn syrup, then it's like telling them, hey, you know what? You should probably get rid of your refrigerators at your, at your plant because it does good things. So, so, I mean, maybe that's why they were using it. It's not a conspiracy because it literally does some good things to preserve food so that we have more food later on than we have to produce it every day. And so some of those things are, you know, some of those things are not conspiratorial, they are intentional. Um, one of the things that kind of struck me when you were talking about moderating fruit intake was that it's true that like historically, fruit was a lot more of a um, delicacy than it is now. It was right. a lot rarer. Yeah, you know, yeah. you you weren't like pouring apples down your throat back in the day. It was like you might get one and you know be excited about it, and then like a week later, maybe you get another one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, was, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't as prolific. But right. now and we're it, just being shoved fruit all the time. And be, with the lack of refrigeration, yeah. it was hard to get. True. So you know, until industrialization, right. which would also include the creation of a refrigerator, we would have our time having access to fruit, fruit year round. Okay. All right, so then what do we do? What, I mean, what, how, do we, how do we regulate insulin? How do we lower, you know, get these hormones? How do we stop, how do we get in control, you know? How do we make sure that we don't care about calories anymore? How do we control our metallic, you know, if we have no control over these things, mm -hmm. how, how do we, what do we do? Well, one of the things we can do as humans is we can we can do something called fasting. Um, stop eating. That's just crazy talk. No, it's not. Uh, until recently, let me get let me get until recently, and recently meaning in the last 50, 60 years. Um, Fasting was a, a normal thing, um, and and so we Among everybody or just in certain situations. No, in in, in cult cultures around the world, as a health tradition, fasting has a long history. Hippocrates is widely considered the father of modern medicine. Among the treatments that he prescribed and championed were the practice of fasting and. and consumption of apple cider vinegar, which I'm not going to come into seriously. I'm not going to talk about that apple cider vinegar. That's a whole juice. nother. Well, that's a big fad thing. Yeah, though. it is a fad, but it's actually not a fad. It's, it's been it's a way back in the day. Wow. Um, fasting for spiritual purposes yes. is widely practiced yeah. for the longest time. Muslims, Christian, Judaism, Hindus, yeah. but Buddhists, very common practice. Definitely aware of that. Yeah. Um, Muslims use, and this is the crazy thing I never understood. Ramadan, not in the winter, when it seems logical to have a fasting, fasting during the day. Because why would you want to eat? Why would you want to use the time of the year when the sun is the most out? Ramadan is in the middle of June, July, right? Okay, so it's in the summer. It's the summer season. Sure. Ramadan in the Muslim tradition. Mm -hmm. Nobody eats during the daytime. Yeah, but they eat at night. Then they eat at night. Yeah. Then they go to sleep. Then they wake up and they do it all over again. Yeah. So they only eat at night. Yes. So they fast all day. Yeah. It's a very common practice. That intermittent fasting is part of this fasting concept. Oh, oh, like it's not permanent necessarily? Like Ramadan is like what forty days or something. Yeah, so they do it for a period, time period. Okay, so it's very common. Um, that's my that's my point there. All right, so the fact is is that there is a difference between fasting and starving. Let's let's make sure we're we're clear on this. Okay, starving 
is the lack of ability to have access to food. Okay. Fasting is the conscious decision not to eat food. Those are two, that's two different things. If I am starving in India, is the phrase we always talk about, I have no food to eat. It wasn't my choice. Right. I am food, what was the phrase? I'm in, a I'm in a food desert. I have food insecurities. Yes, food insecurities. I have no food. And when I have no food, what choice do I have? I don't have food. Um, but if I'm fasting, I am not fasting because I have food insecurities. I am fasting because I choose to reject an emotional response that my body has created. So I think to accept that as a choice, what are the like compelling reasons why I would want to do that? All right, so the first compelling reason is the studies that were done on food reduction. So we go back to all diets work, all diets fail. The right. reasons diets work is because you have reduced um, the amount of food you're going in for a time period. And usually when a diet ends, you return to some level of uncontrol. So you're in control and you lost and then you lose control. During that time period, you have caused yourself to, um, you know, during the control period, you've made choices or you have allowed someone else to say, this is what you should eat. Then when you're done with that diet, the reason it returns is A, there's a program in your brain and B, your body wants to go back, you know, that, and, and then B, you don't really have control of the calories that are going into you. In contrast, when you do fasting, A, fasting in general usually is, is considered a lifestyle choice. Um, you lose the calories. You don't have calories coming in. I mean, you lose the body fat. You don't have it. You don't have fat stores being produced. You're using those fat stores. You're rejecting all of those, those signals to your brain and says, I should eat. And at some point, the good news is, is that those things stop, stop talking to you. Um, fasting, this is the great news. We're talking about insulin, insulin resistance. Fasting is the most effective and consistent strategy for decreasing insulin levels. A fact first noted decades ago and widely accepted as true, all foods rose insulin. Therefore, the most effective method of reducing insulin is to avoid all foods. There you go. Blood glucose levels remain normal as the body switches over to burning fat from energy. Yeah. All right. Now, what about that thing where they talk about like putting your body into starvation mode or whatever? Is that, is that part Are you of talking about ketoacidosis? Oh, I don't know what that means. That's what he, that's no, the, no, I'm talking about like on purpose, like, like where you, um, like I, I thought maybe that was part of the whole fasting right. thing was. So two studies I'd like to bring up. Let's go. Um, first study done in 1944, 1945, uh, they took a bunch of guys, um, with the same age, pretty much in the same age group, the same, same about, you know, height ranging and stuff like that and they took, put them on a caloric reduction diet. Uh, some things that happened while they were doing that caloric reduction diet. Uh, one, they became, utter, they became utterly obsessed with food, utterly obsessed. They were just like, they were stealing cookbooks. They were, um, you know, they would talk about food. They would think about food. Um, another thing that occurred is that their body temperature regulation became really odd. Um, and one man was described as saying, it was a hot, warm summer day and I needed to wear a jacket. He 
he, there's there's a, there's a correlation. Is that that whole thing about where like you're not taking in enough calories, so like heat production goes down, right? And therefore you might be cold. Right. So one of those things the body can do to make it so you need less, you you need it has less basal metabolic rate is to say all those functions are regular, regulated. So if it's regulated, it can regulate. Um, the best example is, let's say I have a coal plant and I get 2,500, you know, pounds of coal a day um, to burn, to burn at, in the coal plant. And if uh, some, by some reason, I've reduced that, that coal, the amount of coal that I get on a daily basis down to 1,400, I'm not going to burn 2,500 dollars, 2,500 pounds of coal on a regular basis. I'm going to have to reduce my my burning to 1,400 to keep producing the same, uh, you know, the same electricity. And so, if I don't have enough energy, obviously my engine is going to reduce the amount of energy, you know, of coal it uses. Right. Um, I mean, if I don't have enough coal, then I'm yeah. So. So basically there are things that the body says, okay, well, we're getting less, so we're gonna do less. Mm -hmm. And it takes time, it takes about two weeks for your body to adjust to that. But over time, um, you know, you, your, body will, your body will adjust. For some reason, studies have shown, and it may be because your insulin resistance goes, most likely it's your insulin resistance that goes down, um, is the reason why, um, you know, we don't have that same reaction when we do fasting. So, uh, in 1960, Dr. Garfield Duncan of Pennsylvania Hospital of Philadelphia described his experience with the use of intermittent fasting on a treatment of 107 obese subjects, subjects who had been unable to lose weight with caloric restriction, had lost hope and agreed to try fasting. One patient started off at 325 and taking three blood pressure tablets. Over the next 14 days, he would subsist on nothing but water, tea, coffee, and a multivitamin. He found the first two days difficult, but then his astonishment, his hunger simply vanished. After losing 24 pounds in the first 14 days, he continued with shorter fasting periods, losing a total of 81 pounds over the next six months. Surprisingly, he had a sense of vigor during the prolonged periods of fasting. A sense of well-being was associated with the fast. Instead of cold in the middle of the summer, vigor, like there's a moment of euphoria. There are, um, you know, physicians advocate fasting as far back as the middle eight mid 1800s in modern medicine referencing and fasting can be found as early as 1915 but there it seems to fall out of favor in 1951 dr bloom of the piedmont hospital in atlanta rediscovered in quotations fasting as a treatment for morbid obesity um, others followed including dr duncan dietrich who described their positive experiences in the journal of medicine Journal of American Medical Medicine. In extreme cases, in 1973, physician monitored a man during a 382 therapeutic fast, originally weighing 465 pounds. He finished his fast. I'm sorry. He he did monitor a during a 382 day, 382 day therapeutic fast, originally weighing 456 pounds. He finished his fast at 180 pounds. Wow. No electrolyte, no electrolyte abnormalities, abnormal, abnormalities wow. were thought, were noted throughout the period and the patient felt well throughout. So are these, are these fasts um, the same notion as what you were describing about Ramadan where you fast during the day and eat at night? Those can work as well. This is, this is extreme fasting. Okay. This is, tea, coffee, water. This is nothing over 50 calories in a 24 hour period. You, you can't live. You like, can. How, how, how? 
nothing but water, tea, coffee. You can live no. without eating food. But it eat, is a no. breakthrough paradigm that I'm trying to get everyone to understand. No. That is really what, what do they tell you when you're in the wilderness? You can survive on like, water alone. It for a while. For but, a while. You but, have to have food after seven to fourteen days. Most likely, but most likely people in the wilderness die from dysentery, not from lack of food. And most of Americans, most of Western culture are in the obese category. If you look at the bell curve, most of us are overweight. It's a so put most of us in the forest, not the people that are walking the forest, you know, that are super skinny because they've been out there forever, because they're on, you know, they're just walking through the forest, whatever. But, uh, you know, just a regular camper, and usually it's kids or it's, uh, you know, kids get lost. We're not talking about kids. Let me be very, very cautious. I should have said this in the beginning. Well, now that I'm talking about fasting, let me say this. Fast, extreme fasting is not for anyone under the age of 25. Oh, okay. Let me be clear. Under the age of 25, your brain is still developing. Okay. And develop, development of the brain requires glucose. Okay. It's its preferred, remember I said, mm -hmm. it's its preferred source of energy. And that's how it's gonna build new synapses and stuff like that. So anything under 25, you know, extreme fasting and the, the psychosis of being, you know, like, what's that, what's that, what is it called? Uh, not bulimic, but um, anorexic. Anorexic. Uh -huh. so those are, those are two separate things. Anorexia is a is psychosis, you know, that's, that's a psychological issue. Whereas fasting is mental control. It's conscious decisions. It's making good choices and then saying, okay, I'm not going to eat today. But, but what about like nutrients and stuff? Which one you has to have? Those? No, your body already has them. Remember, it's, it's the most, it's very efficient at storing the things you need. I, if you want micronutrients, which are vi all the vitamins, okay. then take a multivitamin while, while you're fasting. So you're saying, you're saying because you have all this fat already, correct? it figures out to use that instead of new intake of food. Yes. The new intake of With food. With 100% efficiency. The new intake of, yes. Yes. It takes a while to convert. I, I never said it was be, it would be like switch, well, no, making a switch. No, you did say like, what was it, two weeks? Um, or was it 30 days? I can't remember what you said, but you did give it. Well, in, in, in the first, the first, and by the way, the first fast is the hardest one. It is. But as someone does that, it gets easier. Um, the first fast I did, in the 36th hour, I was very nauseous and I did feel sick. But I continued to push through because I believed what the studies were showing that it was possible. I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that it's okay. What? It's okay. You can just not eat. I cannot eat. I don't, I do three days a week. I don't eat. What? I don't like eat at all for three days? No, I eat, I don't eat Sunday and Monday and I don't eat Thursday. I'm, yes, that's right. Yeah. At all? At all. It's crazy. I've lost 12 pounds. What? In how long? Two weeks. 12 pounds in two weeks. And most that's of that's good. probably water. Well, and it'll change over time, you know? but yeah, I've lost 12 pounds over two weeks. Yeah. No sugar. So what I'm doing is I don't take, I, I watch what I eat, 
I try not, I don't, I try not to take any sugar in. On my fast days. Now, see, I, that's a tricky statement. So no, no created sugar, no like sugar, sugar. Like you take glucose and like the sugars in the food, right? I don't know if this is an example of what I, what I, what everyone should do, but when I broke my fast, I had a salad with some dressing, um, some like, like some light poppy seed dressing that probably did have a little bit of sugar, uh, but most of it was the salad. Okay. Um, and I had uh, uh, green beans. Today I had uh, for breakfast. I had some some flatbread, which had some sugar in it. But this is not a fast day, so. The two other days, you know, I didn't take anything, and I'm trying to get rid of the food that's in the house that I had before I decided all this. Um, I don't drink any soda. I drink LaCroix or a, 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 a sparkling water that has no calories in it whatsoever. Um, I drink black coffee with almond milk in it, low calorie, zero, a low calorie of almond milk. This is on fast days or on coffee I, you can drink all the coffee tea but no sugar in the coffee you can well, drink all the coffee you want but what about what they scream at you about uh, coffee is acidic it doesn't matter that's not a thing if you're not taking any food your body doesn't worry about it but okay um, so that's what i was getting at so so what does a non-fast day look like um, so a non-fast day looks like uh, conscious decisions to uh, eat clean. I guess I, 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 that's a very vague word, but um, okay, some of the stuff I'm doing right now is is uh, uh, you know just some chicken or uh, uh, like today I made I, I made this week. So one of the things that they were saying. Um, is, you know, fasting a practical guide. What can I take on a fasting? All calories containing foods and beverages are withheld during fasting. However, you must stay well hydrated throughout the fast. Please stay hydrated throughout the fast. If you're going to fast, your wa water is your best friend. Go buy one gallon, the whole one gallon, and your goal that day is to drink that whole gallon. If you feel hungry, drink water if you feel hungry, hungry yes absolutely every time you feel hungry drink water if you're going to pee a lot don't worry that's a good thing in this scenario um as a good practice start day start each day with eight ounces of cold water to ensure adequate hydration adding squeezing you can put lemon it's not over 50 calories. The key here is 50 calories or less. So the whole day? If you take in, no, if 50 calories, well, I mean, if you take. Per thing you eat? If, if, or yeah, again, yeah, if you take in 50 calories in a four hour period, you are not breaking your fast. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's my rule. Okay. Right. Um, so is gum okay? Gum is great. Gum is really, gum is, is a good thing. Okay. Um, but water is best. If you can do it on water first mm -hmm. and get through the first few, but gum is okay. okay. But it's still, it still might raise, but it's not gonna be a lot of, lot of raising of insulin. It's just, okay. you know, it's just, it may settle your stomach. But, you know, LaCroix, you ever, you ever heard of LaCroix? Well, sparkling water. Sparkling right? water. Yeah, sure. Um, avoid but, but not the flavored sparkling water. Avoid the one. Look at the ingredients. Read the ingredients. What what does it have in it? Um, the 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 green tea extract. I would only do that on days that I am not fasting. Okay. If you want to drink tea, green tea, make it, and then chill it. Like don't okay. go buy the extract and then 
because I've looked at the ices and I've looked at the other things and usually in there, it says zero calories on it. So there's very trace amounts of all that stuff, right. but you're just trying to avoid. So water, green tea, cinnamon's great. Oh. Cinnamon, don't, don't, not the sugary kind, just I straight know. up cinnamon. cinnamon coffee. Before. While many assume that coffee suppresses hunger, studies show that its effects are likely related to, an, to antioxidants. Both decaf, de decaffeinated and regular coffee show greater hunger suppression than caffeine in water. Given what? its healthy benefits, there are no reasons to limit coffee intake, but caffeine in coffee may also raise your metabolism, further boosting your fat burn. I've been I've been off coffee for like a year since because I thought it was good. I thought it was okay. Yeah, the, I mean, caffeine, this whole bad good thing yeah. it keeps going back and forth. I know, but I mean I mean caffeine. Coffee, yeah, because I've I've been drinking decaf. All right, something that's great that you've probably never heard of: chia seeds. I have them. Yeah, chia seeds are high in soluble fiber. Remember, fiber. Can you eat them? Absolutely. You can put themselves. them. In, you want to put them in water or in some. Oh, you can put them in water? Yeah, water. No. You can put chia seeds in water. Um, and omega 3 fatty acids. These solid seeds absorb water and form a gel when soaked in a liquid for 30 minutes, which may add aid in appetite suppressant. They can be eaten dry or made into a gel or pudding. I, I wouldn't eat them dry. No. I, I tried it dry. It's not good. So, so um, when you said put them in water, do you mean that, that thing? Soak them and make them into a gel? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and then your Not stomach gets water full. Drink the water. Your stomach gets full, but they're just it's just soluble fiber. Uh -huh. And so if your stomach's full, then that hormone stops sending you. You yeah. stop being hungry. Oh. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that I experience that I would like to let everyone know, I get headaches when I fast. What can I do? Try increasing salt intake while you Yeah, I know it's crazy. Salt's bad for you, right? Salt improves water retention. No, no. removal. Removal. Okay. Yeah. It's something. Try increasing your salt. Intake. Headaches are quite common the first time, few times you try try fast. So the first few times, just expect a headache probably in the thirty-six hours. Just oh. it is. That's true. That's you true. Know. But now your stomach is empty, so if you take Tylenol, uh, so I would, I would, I would recommend a gel capsule, like a leave. Or what if you take like prescription that. medication that you're supposed to take with food? Um, then drink, uh, take a small amount of 30 calorie almond milk and drink that with your pills. Oh, and that will be Which good. is what I do. Okay. It is, but that that's 30 calories. I mean, that much in a glass uh -huh. is 30, is maybe not even 30 calories, but it's a whole bunch of liquid. And then you can drink it with, you can do it with a croy too. It's believed they caused by the transition from a relatively high, high, salt, high salt diet to a low salt intake on fasting days. So that fluctuation from high salt to low salt. That's good. Headaches, no, no. Oh. no you're, you're, you're just trying to lower your salt, okay. not delete salt. Headaches are usually temporary, and as you become accustomed to fasting, this problem often resolves itself. In the meantime, take some salt, some extra salt, in the form of broth or mineral water. My stomach is always growing. What do I do? Yeah. What do you do? I already told you. Eat food. No. Um, what do you do if you're fasting and your stomach is growling? Good point. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, you know, uh, I there you go. Yes. What chia seeds are that? Certain, yes. And okay, I take medication with food. What can I do I during that. fasting? Certain medications may cause problems with an empty stomach. Aspirin can cause stomach upsets, even ulcers. Iron supplements may cause blah, blah, blah. Uh, please discuss whether or not these medications need to be continued with your physician. Also, you can try taking your medication with a small serving of leafy greens. Blood pressure can sometimes become low during the fast. If you take blood pressure medicine, you may find your blood pressure becomes too low, which can cause lightheadedness. Consult your physician about adjusting your med medication. All right, let me just say this. After listening to this video, well, let me just say this. If you decide to fast, 
the number one thing I would say is do it. Try it. Just try it. What's the worst? I'm telling you right now, I'm not a doctor, but I'm sitting here and I'm fasting. I do fasting. All right. So I'm not dead. So you're not going to die. All right. So just try it. So you've done, but, but the way that you described it with the three days a week thing, you haven't done like. I haven't done extreme fasting because okay. intermittent fasting so intermittent, is, working, is working for me. Okay. Got and it. it it fluctuates. So what you're doing is like would be called intermittent fast. My, my yes. Okay. It it, it works for me. Okay. Um, five two. I call it a five two or or a, a three three four. Okay. So five two meaning that five days a week I would I could eat five days a week I could eat food, and two days a week I choose not to. Okay. But I add the Thursday because I also work on a Thursday. If I didn't work on Thursday, the best day. Two is the best day to fast is a day you work. Okay, so yeah, so fasting works. You should tr really try it. Mm -hmm. Like, and 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 there are, you know, I think we went over the fact that uh, there are some things that you might be concerned about. Um, but yeah, just just go ahead and and um, you know try it for you know, 24, 48 hours. Um, the first time may be hard, uh, but it, it can be, um, it, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the, the process, it becomes very rewarding. Um, if you're, if you have a scale in the house, um, you know, weigh yourself before you start, and then when you're done with the process, weigh yourself at the end before you know and, and see what the see what that difference is most of that may be water weight on the first first go through but mm -hmm. it's not it's not going to kill you um you need to drink water and uh you know you can drink some other other non-calorie containing beverages herbal tea is one of the nicest ones you can drink uh herbal tea uh green tea, um, black tea, with no, and none of those having, you know, sugars in them. Um, so no vanilla chai lattes? No vanilla chai lattes. That would be, that would be quite, um, yeah, quite a, a big mistake on that part. So, yeah, so I would just say surprise, uh, healthy choices include, uh, since that was the topic that I, I presented as healthy choices, one of the healthy choices you can make is not to eat for a time period. Wow. So or indefinitely, apparently. Not indefinitely. You're going to have to eat at some point. Yeah, I think that we should. Uh, for a time period. Right. Yeah. And then if your body runs out of fat to consume, right, that's when you die. That's when you die. Right. Yes. But not before. Not before. Just from not eating because right. your body's smart and Correct. it knows to use the fat. Right. But important rule, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. That's correct. Yeah. Please drink water. And water somehow helps you not feel full, not feel hungry. Right. It shuts off that hormone. Which seems magic to me. So yeah. what about putting salt in the water? Um in everything you drink, probably not. I but didn't say everything. Just, just in the water. water. Maybe a little bit. Just okay. take a little bit in your finger, put it in the water, okay. and let it let it let it be in the water a little bit. Is there is there benefits or drawbacks to different kinds of salt? No, salt is salt. Salt is salt. NAC sea salt. NAC pink Himalayan salt. Table salt, ionized many salt. Many of those, salt. many of those items have a higher or lower content of minerals, which don't uh, do anything at all. Uh, but mostly, the NaCl in those salts are what you are trying, you are going to absorb. Okay. I mean, your body does absorb minerals, but it's a whole another. That's a micronutrient. And so you should that's take, important. you should take a multivitamin. You should take a multivitamin. Okay. You don't want to eliminate micronutrients from your body. 
what about other supplements? Because one thing that I've been doing, um, this was in conjunction with that thing I mentioned about not eating, not eating carbs before noon, is that in the morning, the, the type of uh, drink that you're supposed to make has uh, three primary ingredients. It has, um, well, now I'm going to forget them all, uh, but it has three supplement ingredients, uh, wheatgrass, um, and two other things. Uh, also, uh, oh, cacao, and um, a third one. Should you not have those? I don't know. Okay. But if you if are they going have more to than take 50 it, calories. No. Yeah, that's the first, that's the first thing. Okay. You need to look at the ingredients. Um, if they are, if they are uh, ingredients that are, you know, ginkgo biloba or, or some type of over-the-counter um, um, herbal supplement that right. has, These are all that aren't, you know, that are, are like supplements that don't really have, you know, science-based, uh, human-based studies to prove whether or not they, what they really do. And it's just, uh, then I would say, try the fast without it. Mm. And then later on, do your own personal study and see what happens if you take the, you know, take it. Um, because most herbals, herbs that are in the, the non-food and drug administration understood groupings, mm -hmm. these haven't been, you know, studied by our, our drugs that either have a placebo effect mm -hmm. or they have an effect on you in a certain way, but not on somebody else in another way. Right. Yeah, that's the definitely true. And the only way to find that out, how it works in you, is to use them mm -hmm. in a controlled environment. Okay. They are alone. Yeah. I might try fasting. It it, it will work. But and not today. Not today. <laughs> And, and anybody who's trying to think about fasting uh, but says, I, I don't want to do a, a full 24 hours, um, skip breakfast. Even though it's the most important meal of the day? That is a, uh, another one of those assumptions that should be up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. If you're not hungry, let me be more specific. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. But what if you like the taste of something? You're not hungry, but you enjoy the taste of it. If you're not hungry, don't <laughs> eat. Okay. Gotcha. And lastly, please enjoy Thanksgiving responsibly. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah, uh, right before Thanksgiving. This is our, our please episode enjoy, right before enjoy Thanksgiving. Fast. Thanks, no, don't fast on Thanksgiving. That is that is being responsible on Thanksgiving. It is always important to uh, it's always important to experience life's life's experience with other people. And I think one of the last things that I would say is if you choose to fast. Um, do it, but don't talk about it with other people because, like Ed here, he thinks I'm crazy. I do, so but it, it, was, it's not, it has nothing to do with you bringing oh. up the fact that you're fasting, <laughs> it's just more fuel to the fire, but right, I, I get it, yeah, I get it. If you people will tell you you're crazy and they will discourage you, and remember. We are not in control many times. And if someone else has decided to tell us that we're crazy, we might think we are crazy. And we might take in food, which is on our fast day. So that would not accomplish our goal. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta keep it on the DL. Exactly. Because you know. When you, you show you, results, yes. then you can let everybody know. Right. Because if you get led with, I'm going to tell you about fasting. Right. Oh, no one would have. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody would have turned it off. Right? right. No, you have to. You have to give the results, 
you have to build your assumptions. It's, it's good. Break we'll down the assumptions. Break it all down. Yeah. And so what's the book again? The Obesity Code by Jason Fung, MD. And I can attest that it has lots of interesting graphs and charts in it that yes. we didn't get to see. Right. Right. But it, it's very sciencey. It's on, it, the whole book is on uh, Audible. I am not asking for any revenue from this. This, the other great thing about this diet plan is that you don't have to buy any bars or shakes. Oh. No one's telling you point. to buy anything. It's telling you basically don't buy anything. Don't buy Not anything. Even food. This is the best diet plan you could possibly. It's the cheapest. It's the cheapest, cheapest best diet plan. You will diet. save money fasting. That's you amazing. will save maybe a hundred dollars a month fasting. Wow. As long as you don't buy food and it goes bad in your fridge because you fasted. Right. Like, you gotta adjust, adapt. Learn you how gotta to adjust, adapt. Adjust yeah. down. Right. What you buy in the first place. Right. Yeah. But uh, ultimately. I think it's one of the best diet plans I've ever found. Life-changing, uh, lifestyle-changing plans I've ever found. How long have you been doing it? Just for the two weeks or longer? Uh, I tried fasting two months ago. Then I went on vacation. It wasn't fasting and vacations do not really go Even well. Even dieting and vacations don't. Yeah, they don't. That doesn't yeah. go well. So uh, both years I've tried. Di certain diets and certain lifestyle changes yeah. or whatever in both 2015, no, 2016 and 2017. And my downfall was always vacation. Yes. Yeah. So you had to make a commitment. Okay, I'm back from vacation. I'm going to fast. Yeah. I'm back from vacation. I'm back on my program. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm done with that, that family event. I'm back on my program. Um, back on my that you know my fasting um, initiative. Um, if you stay consistent, a few days of good high caloric intake will not ruin your because it will not ruin your your fasting um, commitment because while you're fasting, your insulin resistance goes down. So when you start eating again, the high fat. You you still have an insulin resistance. A a long progress. It, it, the way we got fat is we got fat over a long period of time. The way we lose weight is we lose weight over a long period of time, and it's and so we're creating new pathways, and and that's what and that's why I talk about in the beginning. I talk about that that little program weight is that we're going to change. You can change that weight. That your set your body is set at by lowering that insulin response, and, by, and fasting will lower that insulin response very, very fast and very easily. Awesome. So, all right. Well, yeah. that was my presentation. Well, thanks, Mark. That was yeah. uh, some enlightening information. I would <laughs> never have guessed that the healthy choice you would recommend was to not eat. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm going to try. <laughs> and you should too. Yes. Um, how do I lead into this? Um, this is, uh, it's, uh, it's always, so let's see. I'll have to edit this out. I can do that. Um, except for everyone who's watching live right now. Right, except for the people that are writing. Um, okay, so. Well, yeah. Um, uh, ugh, that's not going to work because that's the wrong. Text. Yeah, we don't want to. We can't erase that. But nobody can see that anymore.
so this study was done in 1940, 1945. Um, it was called, uh, let's see, let's go back to that. Um, Um, so a guy, so there was a gentleman, um, uh, you know, we, we found, they, they, let me, let me get to where he talks about this. Um, underlying in this book is, cause I don't think anyone could sell a book called the fasting, the fasting secret. I think they could, but it's probably book two. In the same <laughs> uh, so if I can find this, uh, so um, so and, 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 and okay, it's in the first to feed people instead of just making sugar out of it. Right. the book uh, it's 2018 oh wow okay yeah it's just wonderful wonderful oh, stuff oh really um uh -huh. as above try increasing your well it says cramp cramp it was talking about cramps before but uh, dude what about the, all the water you want but what about the, the all the juice? tea you want yeah. no 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 sugars in them of course by far Sugars. Sugar bake. Um, um, is anybody in here? Oh, your battery's low. Yeah. Okay, so we gotta keep going. We're almost done here. Um, 